Hello and welcome to the First Issue Club podcast, where each and every week we cover first issues only. We are your reading guide to help lead you through the muddy and sometimes murky waters that is the comic book landscape. We read first issues only. We're a reading club. We love you. We love comics. And we love all things that are uh, in those in that Venn diagram. Of, yes. Mm. Of, of you and comics. Sorry. Sorry. My mouth was full of delicious Boulevard Brewing Company's Space Camper IPA. Brewed here locally in Kansas City, Missouri. And my God, it is... The the first drink and the last drink are equally as good and tasty as uh, any beer on the market. I dare you to find a beer that is <laughs> as cool and refreshing and as crisp as Space Camper IPA brewed by the fabulous people over at the Boulevard, Boulevard Brewing Company. Uh, they just so happen to also be a sponsor of the show. Did you know that? Uh- I knew that. Did you know that they also are a sponsor of a festival called Boulevardia? I did know that. And what's special about Boulevardia, Greg? Well, Boulevardia is a kind of a newer, uh, would you call it like a festival? It's like a three-day event. Yeah, it's a festival. So it's a Kansas City music festival that has uh, broadened its horizons. Uh, it now it encompasses art. It encompasses um, all kinds of Kansas City-esque-ness. Of the world, and this year they've asked us and a couple other podcasts to come on board and join their podcasting uh, tent stage area, where they're going to be allowing musical uh, performers, big time musical performers, to talk to us lowly podcasting nerdos uh, well, during the event. Well, God, I, I hope Claudio is there from uh, Coheed and Cambria so we can talk comics with them. <laughs> he would probably love that. He would seek us out specifically. Uh, yes, Chris Caraba from Dashboard is there. I hope I get to interview him. Or so Jenny uh, Lewis would also be good. The email was just like, get back to us if you want to do it, and then we'll give you a time for which you'll be there and like what guests are available. So. Yeah. Potentially the most buck wild episode of yeah. First Issue. Club I'll take is I'll right take Valerie June as well. There's a lot of good stuff there. I'll take literally anyone. <laughs> I'll take all three of the guys from Radkey. Yeah, that'd be great. Any one of them. Um, so you are hearing two. The, I would say the most buttery voices on the podcast. That's Greg and Budget King. Mm-hmm. Our crispy toast isn't here. Yeah. Uh, we are recording next to Mike D. Mike D is on uh, crazy deadlines with all of work, but he wanted us to comfort him, so he's somewhere in there. Yeah. So we've been hanging out with him, and we thought, hey, while we're here, while we're here, let's just record some episodes. <laughs> What's crazy about this episode, Greg? What's something that's different? What's well, something that's different about this episode? Um, it's on Thursday. Well, okay, yeah, it's Instead on of Thursday. Wednesday. We released it late, and it's going to be. Ooh. The first ever <laughs> extra long beefy boy first issue club double episode. We've always wanted it in comics, and now we're giving it to you in podcast form. This is a double episode at the end a of two, a two part. At the end of this episode, you're gonna get the first ever first issue club <laughs> to be continued cliffhanger, baby. <laughs> to be continued. Will we survive? Will we make the jump over the the cravine or not cravine? Yeah, cr- cr- crevice. Crevice. <laughs> the cravine. The, the, okay, that's a I great word. It's a, it's a crevice that has water in the bottom, like a ravine. Cravine. Uh, the I made cravine. It. Yeah. First issue club will official we, word. Will we make it over the cravine? We don't know. It's a there's so many comic books and so much comic news that we couldn't fit it into one episode. So it's a two parter. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know comics will just keep on overflowing and we'll keep on covering them. But we got a lot of shit to cover. Yes. Um, and uh, just uh, house. I hate when podcasts say housekeeping, but uh, if you are in the Kansas City area as well, Planet Comic Con is ha- happening in a couple of weeks. We will be there on mm-hmm. Sunday. Uh, doing a podcast meetup, and so if you want to talk podcast, you want to talk to us in any shape or form, and mm-hmm. you happen to be at a con, you already got your variant of Omicron, you want to come see us, no masks. This year they gave us straight up media passes, Yeah. so now we can like have full unfiltered access to creators, so hopefully planning some fun things for the Patreon, so if you haven't already subscribed to the Patreon, head over to patreon.com backslash first issue club join us there for four bucks you get access to a literal ass ton of episodes that we record more than an ass i mean this couldn't fit in a normal ass 
No, this is like a big, yeah. big booty ass. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yep, on that Patreon episode, we covered Spider-Punk, um, which a lot of people were really pumped about, and it was a fun comic book. You made a really cool meme about it today that I was like, this should be fire. I retreated it from my personal account. That's how excited I was about it. And you know, and you know what? <laughs> it took me two seconds to do it. So it, there's no excuse why Marvel couldn't you know, flesh out some up. covers. I loved it. I love that you're sitting at your job and you make the best comic memes ever. Thank you. Um. So, yeah. Uh, check out the Patreon. Check out our, you know, shout out to our our uh, social in general. Yeah, all of um, our homies on the Discord. Yeah, uh, Greg, your fit looks nice today too. By the way, you thanks, got, man. I appreciate you got, it. You got like a nice collared shirt. You got your jean jacket. Mm-hmm. So in general, you look great today. Yeah, I um. So we have started going back out to bars and stuff, mm-hmm. and so we went and saw The Darkness a few nights ago. Oh yeah, yeah. And I had my uh, a cab button on and uh, I'm walking around this bar afterwards and some guy taps me on the shoulder and he goes hell yeah man ACAB all day and I was like it has been a long time since I have been out in public and someone just like taps me on the shoulder and has been looking at my buttons that closely that's nice yeah I kind of forgot I had that button on my person I got somebody the other day when I was wearing my jean jacket they're like are you a button collector and I was like, no, I'm just like a burnout hipster. <laughs> it's just like, I don't really collect buttons. They just, I have to wear my flair to tell people my ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm a walking Applebee's at mm-hmm. this point. I yeah. love, I love buttons and patches and all kinds of shit. So. Yeah, exactly. I feel bad for Jennifer Aniston not wanting to wear all the flair. You gotta have that flair. <laughs> Flinger, <laughs> Flingers, is that where she worked in, uh, in Office Space? I don't know. We'll check on it and get back to you yeah, next we'll, we'll episode. Yeah, we'll check on uh, old Jennifer. Um, okay, let's get to some of the news. Was there... I feel like there was something else. Oh, no, no, we're good. We're good. We're, we're good. I think news. we did yeah. all the housekeeping. Yeah, yeah. Thanks to our sponsor. Updated on what we're doing. <laughs> and uh, plan a Comic-Con. Hell yeah. Okay, um, let's talk about this one, which is crazy. Uh, we've been talking about it a little bit but we need to really hit this whole I'm 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 super but hurt that we continue to do the thing that I wish we wouldn't do <laughs> which is okay. which is talk about bad idea Okay publishing. so here's he, I actually have a, like a thing that maybe redeems it in your mind as to what well, first let's I'm, uh, I'm open and willing okay. I am ready to accept this No 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 I'm not going to redeem I, okay to tell them what it is what is the why why are we talking about bad idea comics again? So bad idea recently said that they're Stopping making comics. No more comics from bad ideas. They said they're making donuts from on now April on. Fools. I think they announced this via, right. via email. Right, yeah. and they said they said no more comics from making donuts. We found out we've we've cracked how to make the best donut in the world. And it's a double donut, right? It's a double donut. Yeah. And so uh, they have done all this promotion of like bad idea donuts, and it's kind of funny. And then they realize then they say that at the South Carolina Comic Con. They are selling these donuts, and with the purchase of the donuts, you get a comic book. And the comic book is like Bunsen Beaver and his pal Tree or some shit like that. Okay. And you can only get it at South Carolina Comic Con, which has come and gone. <laughs> so if you if you are hearing this and you're like, oh, that sounds intriguing, too fucking bad. Oh, oh, don't you worry, Greg. If you wanted to get that comic book, you still can. <sighs> We'll get to that part. <laughs> and so this is just a long line of different promotional wacky stunts that Bad Idea has done. Famous for making the Invisible comic. The graded Invisible comic. Famous for doing, uh, releasing comic books on fake publishers that they make up that are now selling for thousands of dollars. For doing variants that aren't variants that then sell for tons of money. For having you mail in Buttons that you have to be the first person in line to get. Physical buttons you have to put in a postage, like an envelope, mm-hmm. and send them. Yes. They're doing a good job with being a bad idea, but it seems to be not a bad idea. It seems to be a good idea, which they're laughing all the way to the bank. <laughs> but are they, though? Because it's the secondary market who's laughing all the way to the bank. I think they're still selling their comics. They're still, they're making their quota. They're making enough to, to yeah. stay alive. Okay, so here so here's... Okay, so issue two, why this is still newsworthy. First of all, one, the you can buy Bunsen Beaver for about $200, uh, somewhere in between $100 and $200 for an issue of a comic book that 
may be good. Uh, judging a book by its cover looks awful. Yeah. Does not look good in any way. Um, in any way, but I don't know. I haven't read it. Neither has many people because it's hard to get a hold of. Second of all, now you can get it. You can get the second issue by mailing in some buttons mm-hmm. and stuff. So if you want to be a successful comic book uh, publisher, Valiant, I'm looking at you. Uh, then <laughs> I honestly think Valiant outsells bad idea. But the, now they should just do super rare exclusive, like you have to get a tattoo to get sure. uh, some like weird bloodshot comic. What bad idea is proving is that gimmicky shit still works. And exclusivity. I think this is more about exclusivity right. and the NFT hype of sure. like having something that nobody else can have. It's a physical NFT. <laughs> yeah. It's like the it's like the like what was it? The Gucci Xbox that was selling for like 10k or whatever. Right. Like it's just as like having something that somebody else can't have. Nerds want it. Mm-hmm. And frankly, I'm not above this type of shit. This one is going to pass me and I'll be okay. That's I'm making fun of this cuz I don't have it. So mm-hmm. bad idea if you're listening. I know you are. Um, you the, always are. Yeah. <laughs> you troll us. Uh, I actually want this, but I couldn't get it, so I'm making fun of it. That's how my life works. Um, <laughs> That's how the comic book community works at large. Yeah. We t- said in the Patreon, but Highest House, a comic book that we like a lot, got optioned. So um, maybe buy that. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to maybe make some. But like the, the, the publishing house or whatever that bought it was like some... Really small, random. Yeah. No, I'm saying like buy it now because it's really beautiful. It was on IDW and it's like, yeah, it's just good to have. And it's only selling for like $3 more than cover price. Yeah. So if it does pop off, then you have a really cool comic. If it doesn't pop off, then you have a really cool comic. Yeah. Uh, so back to bad ideas. Oh, you want to stick on this? I was moving on. I, I, I'm just curious what their next stunt is. It's, well, I mean, they're doing good. Their, their stunts are working. Mm hmm. So whatever it is, it's going to work. Now they've done two stunts. Oh, they I guess if you count the button stunt, which that one was actually bad. And here's the thing. Oh, you know what was the worst stunt that they did was pretending that they were canceling their publisher. Yeah. That it was like ending. Sure. That was dumb. Um, but every time they do a bad idea, they can just claim, well, it's bad idea. Well, yeah, that's, that's what I think this was the gimmick of the whole publishing houses is the, and, i mean they're literally achi- they're literally trying to do the worst idea yeah for comics and then it works they're achieving it because they're getting news and press and yeah i mean fuck we're talking about it so oh, we talked about it uh, we'll at keep large. on talking about it yeah so um the next thing they do who we can't honestly they're fucking geniuses we can't call the shit <laughs> on that we'll just have to watch and see what's bad idea gonna do next we'll be covering it here they'll be listening unfortunately we will be covering it here <laughs> Despite my best efforts. All right. Uh, what? A, oh, you know what I want to tell you about? Yeah, tell me. Did you know that the record for a comic book being sold was broke? I think even today, maybe. Oh, tell me. Um, issue number one of Superman. Oh, okay. Graded at an 8.0. Which, think about that. Pretty good for such an old comic, yeah. Very good. I mean, like... Uh, mind blowing, if you will, <laughs> <laughs> that somebody just had it stored so well mm-hmm. for so long. Sold, beat the record, the previous record of something. I don't know what exactly it was, but it sold for five point three million dollars. <laughs> I would like to know the person that bought it, one, <laughs> and what their job is, and why they thought spending five point whatever million dollars, yeah, on a comic book is a good idea. I mean, I hope it was a museum, and then that museum is kind of weird to me, but if it's one person, it's like, uh, I mean, that's like a bunch of houses. <laughs> Dude, that's like, yeah. We wonder why homelessness or, you know, and displaced people are such a, a problem in America. It's because people are spending $5.8 million on a comic book. Here's the thing, though. That's what it's probably worth. Because it's so rare. It's it's crazier that somebody spent it than somebody said that's what it's worth. They probably appropriately said, yeah, this is so rare that's what it's worth. Who would spend that? Oh, turns out there is somebody. And then someone's like, I think I have that laying around. Yeah. Oh, let me like dust that off. 
Let me test that 5.3 milli. Milli. Milli, milli. That's, yeah, that's crazy to me that, um, I mean, if a museum did buy it, I mean, how much are dinosaur bones? How much are mummies? Yeah. Like, are you dinosaur put cooler is, shit in museums? Is a dinosaur bone structure more valuable than that comic? Probably. It has to be. I would have to assume. God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> like, actual, for real, ancient history. Yeah. Has to be more expensive than a Superman comic book. <laughs> oh, come on, Greg. That's history, baby. <laughs> but it's not like those bones are over a million years old. That's true. Uh, speaking of history, we should talk about what we're going to be covering uh, this this week, the two books that we're covering on this part. Oh, yeah. So we're covering um, Image with an exclamation point on it. And it's an anthology book that is coming out uh, 12 issues this year, hopefully. Yeah, celebrating 30 years of Image. Yeah, th- Image is 30 years old, so it officially has back problems mm-hmm. and some probably some hemorrhoids. It's and getting so, its first divorce. Mm-hmm. First one's always <laughs> the roughest, and since then they get a little easier. And um, so it's like a an amalgamation of all the heavy hitters that have come through Image and doing their own one-off stories. Sometimes they are tied into properties that are already existing, like the Radiant Black story we got, and then sometimes they're just brand new stories. And then we're also doing the 40th anniversary of G.I. Joe Mm -hmm. and IDW, which was a, I think that's what the title of the comic book is called. It was really mouthy. Yeah, G.I. Joe, American Hero, something like that. It was mouthy in that it had no words. It is the uh, famous G.I. Joe comic book released on Marvel, I believe. Uh, 21, where Snake Eyes is the main character and has no words. So we're going to talk about that comic book as well. So we got two comic books, a little piece of history. We're big history buffs. Yeah, this huge history buffs. Hist- part one, history. You can go ahead and name that one if you want. We go to Comic-Con reenactments um, <laughs> on the weekends and the, years prior. In, in the summer. Yeah. We're really big on the comic book reenactment of 2016. It's one of the <laughs> most vivid and mind-blowing events that happened. People remember it. Yeah. Uh, and then you had another piece of news before we get in. Yeah, it's something that kind of dropped uh, before we started recording. There is a new creative team on Detective Comics. We got Ram V, Raphael Albuquerque, and Dave Stewart are doing a... Uh, well, they're a part of the new run. They're doing a one of four with a story called Gotham Nocturne, which is uh, like kind of like an opera-esque story, was as how Ram V just describes it. Um, they are replacing, I think, Mariko Tamaki and her team that were previously on it. So people are understandably losing their minds because this is kind of a fun, creative team. Ram V is a powerhouse. Powerhouse. He was on Swamp Thing, I think, most recently. Right? Mm-hmm. I think he still is. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's gotten off it or not. But um, So this should be really interesting to see where they take it. Great, great stuff. Was there was there other news about Ron V, or was that the big news today? About I think that was mostly it. Okay, yeah, that's all. I, that's all I saw. Perfect. He retweeted us today because we mentioned that he was the new creative team for Detective Comics. Well, thank you, Romulus Five. Yeah, so he is a friend of the show. He's confirmed. great. I mean, we've been been big on. Nobody's been a fan of Ron V longer than First <laughs> Issue Club. And you heard it here first. Maybe his parents, but by a yes, small margin. It goes Rom V parents, then first issue club, biggest fan. Mm-hmm. Um, will be continue to be fans in any way, shape, or form. Uh, okay, uh, let's get into the comic books. The, it is a doozy of a comic book, the anthology image book. I'm going to just go ahead and say it straight up to start this off. This is how every anthology should be. For the rest of time, end of sentence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you want to know how to do an anthology book, look no further than this first issue of Image. It was a, well, I want to say a goddamn delight <laughs> to read. <laughs> uh, like, it was the right amount of time given to the, in each individual story. And for some reason, each story inside of it Fucking ripped. Okay, so yes, and the so it's starting new stories, so it's a lot to have a three-page story 
that you give a shit about, that you care about. Right. Uh, newsflash, you got to be good at your job. You got to be real good at your job. <laughs> to be able to pull that one off. <laughs> so, uh, Image, you orchestrated a goddamn masterpiece. <laughs> and for being 30 years old, I mean, you've really proven that you can, that you have stand the test of time. Right. If you're Tom Brady, you got 12 more good years. Yeah, and then you're going to fake retire. Right. And then come back. If you're LeBron James, you got nine. Uh, maybe, is that how old he is? He, uh, LeBron's thirty nine. Is he thirty? He might be thirty eight. So there's still hope for me. To but I think he's got like one more year of goodness. You think he quits at forty? I think he's waxing. Oh, just like his hairline. <laughs> he's waning. <laughs> yeah, he's got. He's gonna hold. I don't know. I who, I know. I don't. I want to know who the oldest basketball player is. It's not comic book related, but in my brain, I'm going to Google that later. Uh, yeah, yeah. Note, oldest basketball note player. Note to self, oldest basketball player. I bet it's LeBron James at 39. <laughs> <laughs> that crusty old man. Did you have a favorite story in this uh, anthology book? I did. Um, at first I was going to say, okay, th- there's just so many good stuff. And there's things like, when I read the first one, which I know you liked a lot, mm-hmm. I th- believe it's called Blizzard. It is Blizzard, yeah, by Jeff Jones. Um I was just like, oh my god, I- I've not read a comic like this that like juxtaposes things and starts off like th- and just like hooks you. Right. So I like really liked that. I was a big fan of Devil Lady. Uh, oh when- yeah, was that Mariko Tamaki? Um, the it- Loop Hopeless. No, that was the Mirka and Dolpha one. Was the uh, the Hopeless? Oh one. right, 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 right. Um. And so, I, anyway, I don't know exactly one, but there's, like, essentially, like, it's a teen romance, and then you find out she's the devil killer, and it really worked <laughs> yeah, really well. Um, I don't know who wrote that, but some of the people that on this book, we have, we, you mentioned Jeff Johns, New York Times bestseller, uh, if you don't know him. Uh, <laughs> and then Mirka and Dolpha did a book called Hopeless, uh, which was beautiful um, and was, like, uh, a VR murder fest fetish. Oh, that's right. Yes. Um, Kyle Higgins did a side story of Radiant Black called Shift, which was cool. I, I'm I'm really digging what Radiant Black is doing and the universe it's building. Oh, Wyatt Kennedy did the book I like called Gospel for a New Century, which was my favorite. Is that the one with the Devil Lady? Yeah, yeah, big fan. Yeah. Um, did you have a favorite one? I really liked. Blizzard, which was like the first story we get, it was like very unnerving. It was about like a serial killer, and then the serial killer gets killed by the victim's like father or whatever. And then you think it's going down this like uh crime story, like typical, like gonna tell a story about a dad in jail for killing his son's killer. But at the end of the first like chapter, we see this like demon in like this in the blizzard that's like following the jail bus to the prison so it's now like turning into like okay well it's not going to be your normal right you know story it's going to be some kind of supernatural thing so image tried to do an anthology type book uh with um brandon uh graham 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 Mm -hmm. called island which i i've called i have all the collection of which i loved because i love brandon graham might be my favorite uh, creator, but it was a little artsy in its pursuit, which really played well to me. Mm-hmm. But this is way more straightforward of just like reader based. Yeah. Um, so it probably works better for a wider audience. Is that because you think that, uh, well, I think Brandon Graham organized everything from Island. Like that was his yeah brainchild. He did, but he was like, it was a lot of calling in favors to like other artists. and, and Yeah, I totally get it. But like, Having a like publishing house like image organize it for you yeah. instead of doing it on your own I'm probably guessing, leads to better results. I'm guessing Eric Powell is that who it is probably organized it all. No, it's probably uh, Eric Powell. He's from Albatross. He does the Goon. Oh, did I? Okay, what what's the guy's name? Uh, Robert Kirkman. There's another guy that's in. Eric Larson. Is it Eric Larson? I don't know. There's a guy hype. I should learn the CEOs of Image's name. <laughs> uh, who else? Wait a minute. Uh, the the Todd father. 
Okay. Todd McFarlane. Are those the people really calling the shots at Image? There's got to be somebody yeah, who no. doesn't create shit at Image that actually like. Has I think that's the idea though. That like okay. the creators are in charge. Are also in charge. Which goddamn like, that's too many hats exactly. you're wearing. Like who wants to be CEO of Image and then have to go write a Spawn comic? I don't even know. This is it's too much. It's too much. <laughs> it's, too, it's too much, guys. So it's I don't too much. I brought up Island to say, like, I don't know that each one of these stories is gonna continue in each issue. Like it might get its own. It looks like the next issue is featuring Hopeless on the front, which is the Merca and Dolpha book. So like that might get a little bit more uh press. Right. Yeah, I think each cover is like um showing off a character from like the image timeline, like Image image exclamation point three has rumble on it, and image two I think that's sweet paprika. Yes, it is. And then we have radio oh, you know black what, but on it, the first one. But it does name all. Yeah, okay. So you know what? Maybe it will just keep on going. This will be a great uh, twelve issue thing happening, and you should read it. They are great. It's also like one of those bang for your bucks. Like you know when you used to buy a CD and you would count how many songs there would be, and then there'd be, like, an extra secret song. You remember Secret, secret songs? songs? Yeah. Fucking crazy, right? Uh, this is that, you know? This is the secret song? This is the, this is the CD you bought that had a lot of songs and gave even gave you a secret song. <laughs> was, that, was that Scotty Young's one? Uh, was that the secret yeah, song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking of you like an incubus. I'm pretty sure Science had a secret song in it. And, yeah, the, the secret song... Is nice to have, but forgettable, much like Scotty Young's little piece that he gave us. Because <laughs> he forgot to do one. <laughs> right. Uh, like Scotty Young, it was cute. The artwork was cute. It didn't it, it didn't stand out to me, but it didn't need to. Because Scotty Young's cute. Yeah. He's a good good guy. He's writing Twig soon. Twig will be out. Oh, God, yeah. Image. Yeah, we talked about Twig. Oh, yeah, I get to, like... I get to sell that the piece of art that I have <laughs> of Twig. You will we'll see him at Planet. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll slap his ass again. Again, so you're saying that you've done it before? I've chatted with Scotty Young before. I don't know if you have before. Yeah. So you verbally swatted him on the bum, and I've said nice things to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've always thought about asking him to be on the show, but we don't really do interviews. Can we talk about that for a second? Yeah, we don't do interviews, mm-hmm. and I always get nervous because I'm just like, should we be doing them? And then I breathe, and no, we shouldn't be. Here's the thing: they're too easy. We could do them. Mm-hmm. They're too. <laughs> they're not a challenge. Yeah, Why would we want to do? I them? don't do anything that's not a challenge. And I think that the way we would want to have interviews, um, it's like ambush them on the street. <laughs> Well, it's just like, I don't need to know about, tell me about the new creative thing you're going to do, and uh, how did you get your start with um, Marvel Comics, and where are you going to go now? Yeah. Like, all the, like, 20 questions are so fucking boring, and you can go look them up on that, especially for comic book artists. Right. Like, I want to know, where do you live? What do you eat every day? What's your yep. workout routine? Yep. What's your biggest failure? What's some biggest secrets that you have in life? I think what we should do is... For a Patreon episode for Planet Comic Con coming up, since we have media passes, we should think of ten questions that aren't comic, lame. that comic creators don't get asked. Okay, I like that. Nothing intrusive, like what's your pin number or social security number, but like stuff that is really like, oh, okay, that's kind of a fun question. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, what do you want to see in an interview that isn't the same bullshit you see everywhere else? Yeah. So if you're listening to this, uh, sound off on social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever. What question have you never heard a creator, you know, I want to know if they've ever gotten a physical altercation, a fight. Yeah, you've been in a bar fight? Yeah. Doesn't have to be a bar fight. Did you win? Yeah. It has to be a fight in general. Uh, that's something that I... It's like watching TikTok when those fights happen. Like, it's kind of interesting. Oh, man. Your For You page must be <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Yeah, I like I like seeing things that I'm not part of to be like I'm safe. That's how I like to go to sleep. So you like were you a big fan of uh World Star <laughs> and Rotten.com? <laughs> World Star has popped up in my feed a handful of times. I do like um 
there's a Reddit chain that's like about all these kind of like fights or something like that. Public freakout, I think, is what it's called. Uh, there is yeah, R yeah yeah. Public mm-hmm. freakout. I like to watch. I look to look at that right before I go to bed. Oh my god! <laughs> and I'm not. We even... could never be married. <laughs> and then I get comforted to say I'm safe, and then I go to sleep. I. Oh, I can't handle it. I can't handle those I, people I like, freak I like to out go to videos sleep. I could, fighting videos. I like to go to sleep at an energy level 10. <laughs> yeah, you're like, your heart is like just ready to explode at any moment. Yep. Uh, so yeah, that was the image anthology. And then now let's dip into the 40th anniversary of G.I. Joe, Real American Heroes, the celebration issue, a retelling or re-illustration of um, G.I. Joe 21. Mm-hmm. Where Snake Eyes famously doesn't talk, <laughs> buys a car. Oh, I mean, doesn't talk. <laughs> there ain't no words. I've told this story before. If you are an old head of First Issue Club, but I'll go ahead and tell you again. I first found out about this comic book from none other than Colin Bunn. Um, he did the Sixth Gun, the twenty-first issue, all silent. Um, I as was, an homage, yeah, as an homage, and I. Um, read it and then uh immediately bought that comic book at that time for 20 bucks and i stupidly uh had colin bunn sign both (laughs) oh no you didn't (laughs) yes i did (laughs) was he like i'm not signing this and you're like it would be a funny bit it was not very valuable at the time (laughs) oh my god Um, it's like having Stan Lee sign a box of Captain Crunch (laughs) (laughs) like just worthless it's absolutely garbage (laughs) that's why I have (laughs) to but uh, yeah I do own it I do and Colin Bunn's name is on it uh, because I thought it'd be a nice conversation piece um, at the time so now this has been G.I. Joe lore uh, blown up the, the back of this comic book called it the most influential comic of all time <laughs> <laughs> that seems a little grandiose maybe the comic book that just sold for I don't know 5.8 million dollars is the most important comic book of all no, time no 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 you didn't read the right letter <laughs> So um, IDW got in all of its feels they had tons and tons of authors sorry illustrators redo every single page and if you bought the comic you got a facsimile of the comic afterwards so you got to compare which was beautiful i (laughs) I fucking loved it it was compare and contrast which one that was better yeah you got to compare how shitty old art used to be (laughs) uh, and how great it is now Um, I, what did you think about, like, what was the reading experience of reading this, like, essentially just tomb of a history thing? I, as you said earlier, as we are two comic book historians, Mm -hmm. this was kind of a big deal because I haven't seen this done before Mm -hmm. where, I mean, essentially this is like, uh, I don't know, Kanye West covering Jay-Z's blueprint. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, word for word. Right. Like, this is just a Or bunch it's like of... Taylor Swift redoing her albums. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it's just like, it is a very poignant issue of G.I. Joe. And um, to see other artists take the time out to do a single page of this book, like, it obviously was very influential, I don't know if it was the most influential comic book of all time, but it's almost like renowned and kind of this um, legendary comic am- amongst creators and fans that it's just like, I, I don't know if it was the first wordless comic in recent history, but um, it was definitely like a profound comic because it was like, you know, Snake Eyes, he doesn't talk, and they told this full beautiful story with no words and now and he's probably the most iconic gi joe yeah totally um, besides the one that like turned out to be a wrestler in the wwe or whatever <laughs> sergeant slaughter or something oh is that right was he a gi joe first i don't know I oh mean, I, I i know what you're saying yeah that is that may might be what happened um yes yeah so it has that and then the, the it was it was really fun although you made fun of my compare and contrast uh comment <laughs> To like be like, how did this artist redo this panel, and right. just like kind of like look at it, and then also see how art has advanced. So, right, yeah, I mean, yeah, it it's really cool. Like 
Do you, I, do you need to own this? No. Do you need to read it? No. Is it fun to do both of those things? Yes. Yeah. I mean, if you're a huge G.I. Joe fan, this is definitely a pickup. You already own it. You don't need us to tell you. Shit. Right. Yeah. And if you're like a passing fan, it's still cool to see the generation now who's doing comic books pay their respects to um, a book from Here's, the I'm, 80s. I'm going to give people a comic book hack for this one. Oh, okay. Okay. Left to right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. First left to right. That's that's how you go. Take one of those, like a cardboard box divider, like you might have at an ACT or just a cardboard box in general. Mm-hmm. Bring it into your comic book store. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Grab this issue. Take it into that box. Turn your little cell phone light on. Compare and contrast. Oh, my God. Then put it back on the shelf. And then you've you've had the ex- you've had it <laughs> you've had the best experience unless you are doing it at Doug's comic book shop in New Jersey. Uh, yeah, don't hassle Doug. Yeah, Doug needs all the money you can have. Uh, then otherwise, uh, you uh, you know could save yourself seven dollars and mm-hmm. have the really cool experience. Right. So, uh, what we what you just said <laughs> is <laughs> go to a comic book shop, treat it like a library. <laughs> I I assume you want people to sprawl out in the aisle <laughs> to do this, so oh. inconvenience everyone in that shop. Okay, here, now you may not have heard my story. Uh huh. I have them bringing a cardboard box. Right. So you, now you're bringing a bulky item into so they which most comic book shops don't allow. Um, I okay. I for one have never seen a comic book store ban com- cardboard boxes, my friend. Have I'm, you tried to bring one in? Uh, I have okay. They could just go take a box that stores comics. They could borrow <laughs> <laughs> borrow one in the store. So not only are you not buying a comic book, <laughs> you're not buying a cardboard box. You place it over your head, mm-hmm. and then you put. The now go- it's like you look into a solar eclipse. <laughs> yes, yeah. Nobody knows what you're doing. They probably think you're looking at pornography. You're not. Um, I don't know any other shops that sell <laughs> pornography except that one in Kansas City that we don't go to anymore. Right. Okay. Yeah. But then you. And then this is how you enjoy that comic. And then you can leave. You can also never go to that comic book store ever again. Ever again. again. <laughs> or maybe they just didn't notice you. Yeah. It, if you're dressed to like, I don't know, an invisibility cloak or something, or just you're quiet enough, you yeah. just walk in and do You could also thing. state your intentions to the owner. That's true. Be honest and... F- yeah. I'm going to read this $7 comic book. Page to page, mm-hmm. won't be worth anything after I'm done. I'm also going to be doing it in the confines of my own cardboard box, which I brought in here. <laughs> also, <laughs> quick read because there's no words, yeah. so don't worry about lingering. And then, yeah, then I'll then I'll be making a quick purchase of something else, but I won't be buying that comic. Mm-hmm. If I'm a comic book owner, I would be like, whoa, the gojones on that guy. (laughs) (laughs) The gall. Yeah. You got to respect it. (laughs) How did you not have another truck ball (laughs) drive your ball sack over here? (laughs) Almost made me spit out my Space Camper IPA from Boulevard Brewing Company. Um, All right. Those are the two books. This is part one. Part one. Of First Issue Club Comic Extravaganza. Tune in next week where we will be covering Breakout. Dark Beach, and we only kill ourselves, each other, excuse me. Yeah, we only kill each other. Yep, three great indie books, some more comic book news that we didn't put in here, going over there, and mm-hmm. then you get us again. So there's those are three things that you want to come back for. Join us for part two next week. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, again, patreon.com, First Issue Club. Find us over there. We're on the Discord, Twitter. All kinds of fun stuff. Thank you once again to Boulevard Brewing Company, and we will see you next week. First Issue Club is brought to you by Boulevard Brewing Company via Space Camper Cosmic IPA. Our music is courtesy of the fine folks at Primary Color Music. You can find, friend, and follow us on social media at First Issue Club or firstissueclub.com. You can support First Issue Club by joining us on our Patreon for additional content at patreon.com slash firstissueclub. 